What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Balanced Perception YouTube channel. Today I want to talk to you about a few tips and things that I have learned over, you know, I've been doing this for about a year or so, specifically the cosplay edits that can help you guys avoid some of the mistakes I've made. I've, you know, learned a few tips and tricks from watching several videos and speaking to other editors. Uh, even like this is one guy, I forget his name. Gosh, I'm gonna have to link it below in Germany. And I've been talking with him a little good bit because I love his edits. And he's been giving me some advice. So I thought I would pass that on to you guys. And today we can look at six tips to help you guys with cosplay edits. So let's dig into it. Let's begin taking a look at our very first tip, which I wrote down for you guys, is choose a very contrasting background. As you will see with the picture here I did of Aquarius Taught Me and San Nura Cosplay, I, hopefully I said that right, they did, uh, well, I basically assumed it was from Kingdom Hearts, and I kind of, you know, edited in such a way that I was trying to make it more Kingdom Hearts. -y. I'm hoping that's the idea they were going for, but you can see the two Keyblades here. Well, Cloud has his Buster Sword and Jasmine has a Keyblade. So, you know, I made it more Kingdom Hearts. -y. But if you look at the original picture, which I will show here too, it's a very, very contrasting background for Cloud. Maybe not as much for Jasmine, but it was still enough that I was very easily able to pick out the background from the cosplayers. I ended up, you know, using the pen tool, which helped me cut everything out. I cut, well, I specifically went all the way around. It takes forever. Each individual cosplayer, I went around the keyblades, I went around their arms, everything, their feet, and separated it from the background. This took a while, but it's very, very, you know, useful. It's worth it. So definitely make sure you're doing that if you want to, you know, start doing cosplay edits. And it makes it very easy to figure out what you want to include in the picture and what you do not want to include in the picture. And this right here brings me to my second tip, which is using the pen tool and not using the select subject tool. The select subject tool will get a lot of things and it gets very close. Don't get me wrong, it's good if you're, how do I say? It's very good if you're trying to just generally do a picture and just get through it very quickly, you know, something to post or something to show to someone as an example of what you can do. But it's not good at all for very detailed, in-depth work. You need to use the pen tool and go around the character and you know get it as close as possible to the character's actual body, cutting out their hair. Hair is a pain to do. But with the pen tool and done correctly, it looks really, really great. So I definitely would advise that. A perfect example of a picture when I use the pen tool, as you can see is here. Uh, give me one second while I pull that up is here with UNC Hoovian Girl. Thank you so much for letting me take this picture of you. And I did this edit of her, uh, what is this? Oh yes, from Avatar, of course, Kyoshi Warrior cosplay. This is a great cosplay. I love the series. I love everything about it. So I had to do an edit for this picture. This picture, I had to just, you know, basically cut her out from the picture using the pen tool. I took it at, oh, Gosh, what was that? Queen City anime? I think almost a year ago it's coming up. I think it was Queen City because it's coming up again this coming week. I will be there. So if you see me, you know, give me a shout out, but I will be there anyways. And I cut her out from the background using the pen tool instead of using the select subject tool. This allowed me to get really in there on her fans. As you can see on this image with the fans, I actually went into each individual slot on the fan and cut it out so that it wouldn't be the background stuck in on there. I guarantee you almost if you use the select subject tool, it's going to include all of that. You're going to have to go back through there, cut it out individually, and you're, end up going, you're going to end up using the pen tool anyways. So that's basically my second tip that I wish, I really wish I would have focused on in the beginning. I was all about like, oh, let's just hurry up and select the subject. It's going to be just as good as other people's and, you know, I'll be able to pump out work faster. No. You have to take the pen tool. Sometimes it can take even, you know, 30 minutes to an hour to really just go around and get the person that you want. You still have to go back and, you know, 
select the refined edge and smooth and feather. These are all other things that you guys will get into, but just for now, make sure that you use the pen tool. So that's tip number two. Tip number three is take a full body pick. I, all the time at conventions get caught up worrying about, you know, hurry up and snapping a picture. And then I well, when I first started doing it, I would snap the picture, I'm like, oh, there's another cosplayer, went over there. I wanted to get as many cosplayers as possible because of course I wanted lots of people to see my work. I should have spent more time just on each individual cosplayer and getting all the shots that I wanted. Um, you know, you're walking around the convention floor, you're jumping from person to person, the lights changing, the lights changing, you know, when people walking past, everything's changing. So, you know, you're trying to go as fast and adjust on the fly. I'm like, hey, take my time, calm down and get the actual shots that I wanted. And when I started doing that, I started taking more full body pictures. And the reason I say take full body pictures is because it gives you a lot more, what's the word, variety or options when it comes to doing a cosplay edit. Um, a perfect example of this is here with Shinigami Meg. I met her again just recently at um, GalaxyCon here in Raleigh. She did another awesome cosplay. Go to my GalaxyCon YouTube video, check that video out. You can see her cosplay there. But anyways, in this edit, she wore Urza Scarlet's Heavenly Wheel costume. Amazing cosplay, like, oh my gosh. I, I remember like it was yesterday, it was absolutely amazing. But anyways, I digress. I took a full body picture of her and I took also several half body pictures. The full body picture is the one I use, as you can see for this edit, because it just works better, at least with my personal style, when I put her into this cathedral setting. It looks better when it's an actual person. It looks more so like she was really there, that she was standing there. And it, it just comes together overall better, in my opinion. I really, really like the way this picture turned out in comparison to some of my half body pictures. I Don't get me wrong, I really love my half body pictures, but I like when I have full body more because I can just manipulate it more. I can do more to it. I can put it further away, closer. You can't really do that as much with a half body picture because you're always going to be having to use part of the screen to, you know, like cut off their body. You know, your mind has to fill in the rest. So. That's my third uh, tip for you guys when it comes to cosplay edits. Just make sure you take a full body picture. The fourth cosplay tip for edits that I have is always check for misplaced items. Items such as con badges, watches, backpacks, you know, strings hanging off of cosplay. Any of that stuff are things that you're going to want to remove now. I say that because of course you can remove it in Photoshop, but it's just unneeded work. And it's things that they just make your life overall easier. You can, I mean, if you're a pro at Photoshop, you can remove anything, you, you can do anything you want. I'm not at that level yet. So sometimes when I forget to remove items from people, I'm like, oh crap, how am I gonna you know, edit this out? How am I gonna replace it? What am I gonna do? And I just like leads down this rabbit hole of me researching things, which is good because I learn new skills. But sometimes I'm like, I have so much work to get through. I just want to work with the workflow I'm used to. And to do that, I need to remove the items beforehand rather than trying to remove and post. So the main one I always notice is, as I said, the badge. Always try to hide the cosplayer's badge if you can. Um, always check for loose strings, always check for watches, things like that. And I guarantee you it will make your job a lot easier when it comes to the actual edit. A great example of this, oh my God, I have like so many cosplay edits I'm trying to look through. But I think a great example of this is with my mm, cos partier at AWA in her golden kamoi Sugi, Sugimoto Saichi, I don't know how to say that exactly, cosplay. She had a, I guess it's like a scarf, and then she had a rifle. We were taking the picture outside and grass was getting on the rifle, the wind was blowing. You know, a few things would end up landing on her and it's so much easier to just say, hey, wait, give me a second, wait for the wind to stop blowing. Let me pick all these items off of you. Let me make sure there's no loose strings hanging on your scarf, any grass that has gotten on the rifle as you're putting it there, you know, on the ground, or as you know, you're switching, laying it down. You know, she would lay it down, do a pose, pick it back up, 
a lot of things were just happening and you want to make sure that you get rid of all of these things on the person prior to taking their picture because i'm telling you guys it just really really makes your work a lot easier so that right there is tip number four. Tip number five is going to be use overlays. Until you're extremely, extremely good at Photoshop, I find it very difficult to create exactly what you want with objects and shapes. And it's just easier to use an overlay for things like smoke, fire, fireworks, um, bullets, things like that. Because you can just literally take an item like a picture lay an overlay of what you want on there and then just erase out whatever you don't want and then manipulate that one individual item a great example of this that i did was in this kagiguri cosplay of dc brook i actually ended up getting an overlay of cards that i just used for this picture i the overlay had tons of cards in it it had some flipped around so it, it had some just in ways that i didn't like so all I did was erase the cards that I didn't like and then modify the ones that I did. And it's so much easier than I've seen, you know, some people know how to do this where they can actually create a card in Photoshop. Like they make a square, then they add the color, then they'll add in the picture of like, you know, the king or the queen. I don't know how to do all that yet. So for now, I have to stick to my overlays. And I really love the way this picture turned out. The overlays looks great. I ended up take, making her eyes redder. She had red contacts contacts in but it was it, the picture just came out great with just nothing more than a simple overlay my normal photoshop edits my normal lightroom edits this picture turned out great so that right there will be my tip number five for you guys last but not least we have tip number six tip number six is pose the cosplayer in a way that you think would look good in an edit what I mean by that, for example, is if you're taking pictures of a storm, having her hands up, having her hand forward will look a lot better than a picture just having her hands on her hips, having her hand in the pocket, because you can't really edit lightning or rain or you know fog or smoke into that picture as easily because she's not doing a pose that looks like she's shooting lightning or channeling lightning through her body. The same goes for, you know, any type of cosplay. If you're doing a Power Rangers cosplay, if you're doing a My Hero Academia, if you're doing Deku, having him like, you know, in a kicking pose, in a running pose, a punching pose, it's a lot easier to make that, uh, you know, the green all for one electricity flowing through his body when he's actually doing a pose that is conducive to such edits. I mean, you can see this all over my Instagram. I always try to get the person into a pose that's easy for them and it's really easy to edit. With my Chateau Kaiba picture here, again, UNC Hoovian girl, but even with my sister doing Azula, I still have to do an edit of that. But her in a striking pose is gonna make it so much easier, or her pointing her fingers is gonna make it so much easier to channel the lightning through her body for that specific edit. So I will run through them again, six tips that can help you guys. One is using a very contrasting background. Again, makes it much easier to cut out the cosplayer. Two, using the pen tool. The pen tool, so much better than the select subject tool when you're in Photoshop. Three, is taking a full body picture. That's always very easy to manipulate. You don't have to worry about a half body picture. Number four is gonna be checked for misplaced items, making sure there's nothing there that you don't want. Number five is going to be using an overlay. And for the final tip we have, pose the cosplayer in a way that's conducive or easy for you to edit. Again, shooting lightning, shooting a gun, punching, whatever have you. Make sure you have them in that pose so that when you go to Photoshop, you will already have them in that pose ready to go. And all you have to do is add whatever special effect you want. Hopefully these tips help you guys. Again, I did not know any of this when I started doing my edits and I would just take a picture and be like, oh, I'm gonna edit it. And, you know, I saw a picture like this, this other person did it and I'm gonna copy it or recreate it. And it never went well like that. So these tips definitely helped me. Of course, I've had to learn a lot more with Photoshop along the way, but hopefully these six, you know, little tips will just help you get into, you know, beginner tips, help you get into cosplay edits. And if they do help you, I would love to hear from you guys in the comments section below. That's going to do it for today. I hope again that they do help you. And until next time, stay boundless. See you guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>